Amen, friends. God is good. I thank him all the time for every opportunity. Amen again, because he's God and because he wishes us the best. We come with Monday Thursday message. This week is Monday Thursday and Thursday when we remember what our Lord Jesus Christ did for us on that day. You know, these Easter events, the Holy Week events, are events that are very, very, very important in the life of a Christian. So this Monday Thursday, I come with a message in simplicity. And I want to say, let us pray. Father God, we thank you that you give us every opportunity to interact with your word. I pray that as we read from your word, the Bible, and as we interact together about Monday, Thursday, may the message come clear and loud. And so that we shall follow in the footsteps of our Lord, the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank God that God has kept us. It is Monday, Thursday again. We have had it years before. We have celebrated, and now it is here again. Now, Monday, Thursday is a day that we celebrate the final event which Jesus had, and this is when he had the last meal, the last supper with his disciples. He had moved with them for three years. He had served with them. He had given them example to do work. He had taught them how to fish men. He had taught them in areas of humility. He had taught them in the area of deliverance, of liberating people from evil spirits. He had showed them everything and the ways of teaching the word of God. Now, finally, he gives them another living example at a meal when he shared with them. And why is this day called Monday, Thursday? In other areas, it is called Holy Thursday. Call it uh, a day that Jesus sat down with his disciples. Now, the word Monday is a Latin word, and it comes from the word mandatum. Mandatum comes into English, and it is mandate. And mandate, in this context, refers to a command. Now, you will realize, as we shall be reading from Scripture, in John chapter 13, this is the scripture that stands out. When Jesus actually had finished, the Bible says he went into the upper room. And the upper room, he was with his disciples. He, he sent them to organize a table where he would recline with his disciples. And so he sat with them. And at, by the end of this uh, sharing, you will see where the command comes from. This mandatum, where it comes from. But first, before he gave the command... He organized a meal with them to have some meal with them. And this is what the Bible says about the meal. And so um, when he had sat down, he, his, that he was with his own. And so during supper, in verse 2 of John chapter 13, when the devil had already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus knowing that the father had given all things to his hands and that he had come from God and that was going back to God, he rose from supper. That's verse 4. He laid aside out his outer garment and taking a towel tied around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash, to wash his disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter and told him, um, Peter said, Lord, do you wash my feet? The Lord Jesus Christ said, what I'm doing now, you do not know, but after you will understand. Peter said, now then wash the whole of me. And so the event is actually having three things. One, one that Jesus is doing is it is supper time. And Jesus is having a meal with them. And this supper time is called the Passover a festival is a Passover meal. And the Passover meal, you all know what it came from. Exodus story. We have shared about it over and over again. One night, people slaughtered a lamb, and that lamb was for their deliverance. Now, it was this Passover celebration that they were having. And number two that Jesus was doing was he gave them a living example. 
The Bible here is telling us that he moved from where he was sitting and poured the water into the basin and washed their feet. And the Bible is saying he washes their feet and when you read along, he tells them, do what I have done to you to others. And so the point actually that I want to bring out here is when he comes to Simon Peter, he wants to wash his feet. Peter said, not at all, Lord. You cannot wash my feet. Because he knew Jesus as his master, he understood Jesus as his Lord. And so he said, the Lord bending so low and washing my feet, he said, no. And this is a point that I also want to put across on this Monday Thursday message that, Lord, do you want to wash my feet? In verse 7, Jesus answered him, what are you doing now? You do not know, but you'll know later. You'll understand later. You know, friends, there are certain things that happen in our life. Now, at this point, Peter did not know what was happening. Now, Jesus tells him, you'll know later. I have had events, things happening in my life, but at the point they're happening, I do not know. Maybe even you. There are certain things, a certain word he said, a certain event occurs, at the moment you are angers. You don't not know, you don't know it. But later, when the fulfillment comes, you say, okay, that's why it was said like this. Okay, that's why it was done like this. So there are certain things that the Lord wait, tells us to wait for a moment. So you may be in a certain situation. There could be something happening and you're not understanding it at the moment. Give it time. Here the Lord told Peter, give it time, you'll understand later. And indeed, later on, Peter understood what it meant to wash the feet. Because it is about purification. Yes, many times we walk and we, about the dust gets entangled on our feet and it gets dirty. You go to your house, you dirty in your sheets. No, 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 no. He says, the washing is good. It's about purification. And also these feet, what are they for? They are given to us to walk. And in the biblical context, they are for walking, you get out to go and spread the good news. So make them ready. And so make them strong. And so the Lord Jesus Christ told Peter, you will know later. And this is a very, very important saying, and I want to leave it with you. That actually there are certain things that happen, but even if you do not know, and the Lord has called you to do something, you may not be understanding at that moment of your call, but you'll know later. And feet washing is important because it signifies purity. It signifies Actually, when you have been walking and put in the water, it is all cool. It is all refreshing. And therefore, you need to be refreshed. My father, my, my, brain, my friend, you need to be refreshed and so that you can go on and spread the good news that the Lord Jesus Christ has given us. And so in this man, Monday, Thursday, Jesus gives an example of washing the feet. And I'm going to do a little bit more about that. But you see, it is a meal time. And the meal time, that the meal that Jesus is giving them, is the last supper is giving them an example of the meal and so at that meal is when he does this very great uh, event of washing the feet and the feet that goes to preach the gospel and you know he's giving them a meal to gain physical strength you gain the physical strength to go and work and so jesus christ does that and he's washing of the feet here and now he tells peter that you will know later now the letter that he's talking about is do the same. Jesus is giving the message of servanthood. A servant that serves his people, a servant that serves her people. Because okay, we have servants, yes, they are male, yes, the servants are female, and they do lots of things. But Jesus here is giving us the spirit of servanthood. That's point number one, that he gives us the spirit of servanthood. He was the Lord. He was the master. He was the king of kings, but he bent so low to wash their feet. And so he leaves an example for us. And this is a mark of humility. Monday Thursday brings us humility at its best. Monday Thursday brings us um, servanthood at its best. And if you want to become a leader, be a servant. And many people have given talks, lots and lots of talks about servant leadership, servant leadership. And it stems all from our Lord Jesus Christ in this John chapter 13. And this is more than the message. And so it's a gesture. A gesture that the Lord Jesus Christ leaves us. You who intends to be a leader and anybody else who is already in a leadership. Now the spirit of servanthood is biblical. The spirit of servanthood 
is essential in our life as church leaders. No, no, okay. Leave church leaders alone and, and go to something. I mean, and give more examples. You parents, okay. Mommy, okay. The father, okay. Someone who is the master, I mean, you have people that you supervise at work. There should be a spirit of servanthood there. Jesus was this, could have been a headmaster, could have been a manager, could have been a CEO, but that was it. But he came down and did that. So it is very, very critical on Monday, Thursday to speak about the spirit of servanthood in our lives. Now, do you want to become recognized? Do you want to be recognized in whatever way that you are? Then you go and serve. When you are serving, Recognition, you know, when you are giving someone a plate, when you are giving pouring water for someone to wash their hands, when you know you interact with all sorts of people, and there is recognition there. So if there is something that you are doing, and it is in the service, and it's aligned with God's way, go on and serve. That's for recognition. So God is a real servant, is one who is tried and tested. Now, as you are being supervised at that workplace. As you are being supervised in the home, you child, if you are being supervised and you are serving here and there, whoever you are, you are under somebody, you are being supervised, you are being tried and tested. Remember Job, when the devil was trying to, 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 to masquerade around, the Lord God was asking, where have you been? He said, oh no, I've been here walking around. And Jesus and the Lord God was actually trying to put it to, to, to the devil. And the job, job, the man was taken to be the tested and tried servant. And God said, you go if you want, because job was known to be a tested and tried servant. Now, all of us, friends, we are called upon to be tested and the tried servants that will not, uh, will not um, take leave when the times of trial come. And so this time of Monday, Thursday, it is very, very important that you look at a servant who is tried and tested. I want to thank God that in this ministry, we all who, are, who call ourselves servants of God must be tried and tested. And so that temptations come, when trials come, we stick there. And we are called upon to stick there. The Lord Jesus Christ was himself tried and tested. Temptations came, you know, trials came, but he remained tested, he remained a, a matter, he remained a person that was strongly, you know, uh, strong-willed to continue with the journey. Will you continue the journey? And may the Lord help you and help me. Now, Moses was a servant of God, tried and tested in Egypt. Lots of things happened. You remember when you read the story of Moses, he was tried and tested. And so Moses was the servant of God. And the Bible talks about Moses as one who spoke with God face to face. I desire it. And may we continue being tested and tried. You see the temptations that these people went through, Moses going to the Pharaoh many, many times, one after another, until the time when he liberated the Israelites, set them free. But even when they were moving, there were lots of temptations, lots of trials, of trials. And now we are called upon to be tested and tried servants and shall we shall stick there. Now, the spirit of servanthood is essential, is essential attitude for everyone, therefore. It, I call upon you to feel the same, to do the same. And the platform of empowerment and enthronement is servanthood. You remember, Joshua was Moses' servant. Now, because he was Moses' servant, he served under Moses, and after Moses left, who became the leader of the people? It was Joshua. Can you imagine? Because actually he had been there, he had been tested, he had been tried, and he took it up. And now you also, in whichever place, work, workplace that you are in, in whichever position, continue serving and God will lift you up. It is servanthood is an essential attitude necessary for all leaders. Joshua gives us an example as a servant, and we are talking about servant leadership. Now, another person that I want to give you about the servant leadership, someone who served under, under another person and was elevated, elevated was Prophet Elijah. Read the Second Kings chapter two, and you will see how they moved together, how they served together, and eventually when Elijah was going up to heaven, the mantle was dropped and Elisha took it up. So my brother, my sister, when you are serving, yes, there are times when situations become so complex, become so difficult, but this is a message that it's a platform 
servanthood is a platform of empowerment and enthronement is a gateway to leadership so people need to serve pastors we need to serve fathers union persons chair persons mothers union youth whoever you are choir members you wardens you ushers you preachers you evangelists you pastors go on and serve for this is a platform for us to continue loving and serving god and now this is the point in Matthew, in john chapter 13 Jesus washing his disciples' feet. But of course, as I wind up, don't forget that there's a meal that was commanded and for them to eat together in a memory, in the remembrance of the Lord. So this is a memorable day because Paul talks about it uh, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 talks about the meal being served. 1 Corinthians 11, 23, that he, what he received, he gave, he handed over, and the Lord commanded, do this in the memory of me. So friends, Monday Thursday message carries the following. One, Jesus reclines at the table with his disciples. And at the table, he gives them the following. He washes his disciples' feet and gives them an example of servant leadership. And servant leadership is an avenue for our elevation. Jesus did it and said, I've left you an example. May we continue doing the same. And at this table, Jesus gave them a meal and told them, do this as often as you eat of it. Do this as often as you drink of it in the memory of me. So my friends, the message for Monday, Thursday, Jesus gives a new command. And number three is a new command. And this is it in verse 34 uh, of, of John chapter 13. And he says, a new command I give you. Listen, a new command I give you that you love one another. So a meal, washing the feet and the commandment, love one another. And that's the, that is the gist of the matter. Commandment, mandatum, mandate of loving one another and so this is the summary of the whole thing washing the feet eating the food but love one another and so in this tumultuous world in this world full of hatred we are asked to love one another may god's love be engraved in our life in our hearts may god's love be deep down in our hearts so that we shall live and this Monday Thursday message may give you your heart's desire. Now do the same. Continue serving and serving with love. And may God who is our Father keep you and keep me that when he comes back we shall be counted among the few chosen ones who will be walking on the narrow path heading to heaven. And may God who has kept you and me up to this moment continue keeping you continue providing for you, continue moving along with you, and continue reclining with you, and continue refreshing you and reviving you for this ministry of serving God's creation and serving God's people, of serving our people that are within, with us and serving everyone else that will be coming and with love, mandatum, mandate, love one another. And may God bless you so much in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.